Welcome, everybody, to a very, very special episode of Jerry Saturday. My name is Justin Robert Young, and I started this uh, this Jerry Friday slash Saturday uh, podcast thing because I really like doing a one mic radio show, and I I, I do a lot with. Uh, other people, but I wanted a chance to just kind of do a one mic thing because I really am fascinated by that concept. But on this particular episode, we're making a big fat exception because joining me live from Indonesia is none other than my partner in crime on NSFW show and the Weird Things podcast. He just was it yesterday? You did a show for 70 million television Indonesian television viewers. Oh hell's yes! That's how I got big and fat. That's why I'm the big fat exception. You <laughs> are, yes. In. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, yeah, sorry, to, sorry to just sort of bust in on you. No, 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 no. This is a very, a very big exception because, of course, this is the first time that we've talked publicly since the release of the uh, really what what people are calling. Uh, the greatest literary work of the modern era by by the divine Miss Patricia Harkins Bradley, The Diamond Club, a novel. Uh, yes, indeed. And I'll tell you what, uh, we can address the big controversy. They're talking about it in all of the comments on YouTube. Uh, are you and I, in fact, totally gay for each other? Big time. Big time. <laughs> We're way gay. Uh, we are actually uh, having gay Skype mutual masturbation session uh and then i'm like yeah, oh fuck deep. i have to and i said oh fuck like right as i came um because i was very startled and that's what really gets me off is my startling myself and uh uh i'm like oh jury friday is is supposed to be now so i i came on and i'm like well why don't we just uh jerk each other off uh in terms of celebration on the sh on the show and so that's what we're doing yeah. right now yeah, and then that was when I realized I was a little bit more socially appropriate. Uh, man, do I wish I could see the chat room. I'm going to see if I could call it up on the iPad. Uh, or, you know what, maybe I'll try Yeah, if somebody can go ahead and, and on at Schwood, just go ahead and at reply Brian um, with how to get up the Justin TV chat for my channel on Colloquy uh, so we can see uh, the, the chat room. But, you know, I guess here's, so here's what happens. We do, the last time that you guys saw me and Brian together was on the NSFW show. We launched the book. It goes to number four. And we will talk about all of this again on NSFW show. So anybody listening to this, prepare to hear shit that you're going to hear again in a couple days. Uh, and I'm going to yeah. be on Twit. I'm going to be on Twit tomorrow. Brian's going to be on Twit a week after that. So you're going to hear a lot of this story over and fucking over again. <laughs> As we like to call Jury Friday, uh, the new practicing for the rest of the week. This is, uh, you're just going to, nothing but, but rough cuts. Rough exactly. cuts is the new name of the show. Yeah, no, we're going to, we're field testing a lot of this shit. You know, it's like, uh, it's basically like, you know, like, like the Daniel Tosh rape joke. Like he was just trying to work out some new material. <laughs> we're going to do that, but uh, slightly more <laughs> offensive. Awesome. Hey, talking about uh, working out new material, can I, can I share my billion dollar idea? My billion dollar follow up to the trillion dollar diamond club. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's let's go ahead and save that as a radio tease as we okay. as we tell. Uh, we will reveal before the end of this jury Saturday. We will reveal Brian's what I got is I got a voice message <laughs> no, this morning. Can you play it? Can, I got you, a, can you play it for them? <laughs> I got a voice message this morning. Yes, I can actually. Let me make sure I still have it. I definitely still have it. <laughs> Uh, I got a voice message this morning that in all of my friendship with Brian Brushwood, and mind you, this is a friendship that has literally been defined from the word go of me and Brian trying to out silly the other one. <laughs> like, we met under a context where, like, as soon as the professional element of, like, interviewer and subject was kind of dispatched and we realized that we were both very much gay for each other... Um, <laughs> It has pretty much been defined by one person saying something ridiculous and the other one looking at him blank faced and then saying something even more ridiculous until we both start laughing. Like that's yes. pretty much the basis of our friendship. I got a message from Brian that is the most silly thing I'd ever heard out of his mouth. And I will play that for you and Brian will describe it later in the show. But let's let's talk real quick about what happens from when we last laugh, where when we we last left our audience on NSFW show, because 
it was it was kind of odd. Like we we very rarely we've never done a show in the Twit Brickhouse together. We did that. Yes. And then we both within hours flew other places to do other things. Like you saw far, much farther like, than me, but definitely like it was it was odd. Like it was like like everything kind of happened in a very surreal manner. Well, we and we get accused of like lighting stuff on fire and then just running away. But this is the closest we physically come to doing it. Like we spent a month working on this thing. We launched this ship of sea. We put together that video. That video on yeah. YouTube is over eighty thousand views now. It explodes on the Reddit. Everyone, you know, uh, uh, fully one uh, half of everyone thinks we're assholes. The other half thinks we're geniuses. Uh, and then we launch the NSFW show and uh, physically leave the state. And yeah. only check in, just kind of look up from time to time. Now, normally, anytime we do anything, there's the build up, there's the launch, and then there's the incessant, repeated pleas to please, please keep it alive. Not yeah. this time, man. This no. Time, there's gas being poured all over the internet, and we just, we just barely sparked a spliff because we wanted to get high in a corner. But then Justin, like an asshole, flicked the roach out before it was quite done. <laughs> and then, uh, so I'm gonna. Tie in another metaphor here. No, that's fine. Work on it. Work on it. We'll we'll, we'll come back to you. Um, so, yeah, we. Th- it was the weirdest thing because normally there is there's the element of telethon to our scams, right? Like there's sure. an element, and not even just scams, like but just any project of ours, like be it the Night Attack album, be it uh, the Scam School book, be it any of of our like hey let's try to get to the top of dig back before dig was the new dig back when new, yeah. the new dig was the old dig before it was the new dig again um, real quick can i can i comment on that too have you noticed now that now that i've seen us launch stuff on reddit um right before dig took a big old dump it seemed like they were having a problem with self-righteous cocks who wanted very much to be in charge of burying shit and, yeah. and of taking on everything and it seemed like to fix that, they tried to make the new dig because they were having a problem in that dig was becoming an oligarchy. Uh, boy, am I ever seeing a very, whereas Reddit was this positive community. They were yeah. the people who loved, uh, loved things. But man, oh man, am I smelling some very dig-like stink on Reddit these days. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question was, is that, I mean, because certainly we saw once dig went away from that, they died. You know, yeah, they went from true. let's uh, Google's going to acquire you for a a shit ton of money, not just in the space ball in, in the parlance of space balls, not money, Brian. They're doing it for a shit ton of money. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they went from that to not in existence. And Reddit is something that like, yeah, that is the oligarchy now. But is that not the secret to success? You know, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe that's uh, that's exactly what it needs to be. But uh, but that's not, neither here nor there. Uh, the fact that that it blew up on Reddit and and exploded so organically, like I think sometimes, and I I wonder if the chat realm would be the first to agree with us on this. I think that sometimes we mentally make the trade off between what is a funnier idea and what is an IP idea that has much much more mainstream appeal. And I think in this case, we hit a rare instance where the two were exactly the same, where exactly what we thought would be hilarious happens to be exactly the parody and the social commentary satire that everybody was waiting to participate in. And here's what is different today about the Diamond Club book than it was when we made that video and we even did NSFW show that night. Here's what's different. The success and longevity of it gives us the license for which I will use liberally to go from describing this as a silly prank to the extremely annoying element of us defining it as art. <laughs> like that oh is God. what that is what the success gives us the license to do is that now that it's been successful, we can now say, well, really, here are the overarching themes for which we are illustrating in the way that art would. Yes. Well, and here's the thing, the longer, and you pointed it out, the longer it stays on there, the more it's not BS. Like we're, we're, we're in that mushy middle right now where when we started, as we are prone to do, we didn't want to label it as anything but pranking and trolling because yeah. it, you, could, you can hit number 
for nine on the top ten for one day and then give ourselves a high five because we did it. We trolled them, bitches. Ha ha. There's three one star reviews. But the longer it stays number four, and to me, the real referendum on whether or not this is art is the more it battles back and forth between five star and one star reviews. We were talking about this before we went on the air. That is the first thing I check every time I wake up is to see what the latest five star reviews are because some of them are old faces. I remember who haven't participated in a chat realm thing in years. There was one from a, uh, from, uh, it was beautifully written. It says it puts the capital E in erotic fiction and went on in all these directions. It was hilarious. It ended saying Patricia Harkins Bradley must truly be the offspring of Ayn Rand and Tenacious D. Yes. And then I look and it says from Captain MG. Yes! I, I read that. I didn't realize that was from the, the, the good captain. Permission to come aboard, Captain MJ. Uh, yeah. Now, by the way, Kevin Dublin is pointing out that we do have a bit of a problem, Brian. We do have the curse of four. Because if you remember, the, the Night Attack uh, comedy album hit number four. <laughs> the Iron Club has hit four. We yeah, have the Scam case School of four. Scam School did hit three, and I'm told in Canada, in Canada, we overtook the third. We did. I think, I, think, book. I don't know if we still have. I think that we did. Um, Chris Ronan says we haven't pushed Amazon yet. We've only hawked iBook so far. Amazon is right. Um, it is on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know the ability of, of doing, like, a big push on Amazon like we did on the iBook store. Um, well, here's the difference is uh, our theory was that being in that magic top ten and having good reviews and looking like the other thing would be enough to make it self-sustaining regardless of what was on the inside. And that theory is validated. Yeah. Now, we could try to replicate that on Amazon, but here's the problem. Amazon is orders of magnitude more difficult to bully your way into the top 10 on. Yeah. You know, uh, it was a big deal that we even cracked the top 50 for just a second. So it would, it would require an inordinate amount of marshalling the troops and of, it, it would become the Brian and Justin telethon at that point, but we would have less interest in people giving more money to it. And at this point, we have finally, in all of our, our jokes and commentary, we finally have something that everybody seems to think is hilarious and can grow on its own. So if it does, that would be great and we would love it. But I don't know that we want to that we want to grab the mic and sing one more song just begging for a thousand more dollars for the children. Yeah, yeah. And and here ultimately is why I don't think us doing the Amazon thing is 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 a, pushing it the way that we did iBooks would be a great idea because Number one, we've kind of proven, as, as press has come in about this, that people looking at the iBook store as a legitimate thing is narratively enough for people to talk about. You know, they've, uh, you know, nobody in the stories that have been written about this or the blog posts that have been written about this say, well, look, it's the only thing uh, below Fifty Shades of Grey or the only thing that it's beating it is Fifty Shades of Grey itself on the iBook store. No one has said, but don't worry, the iBook store is bullshit. Nobody buys shit there. Like, nobody right, said that. Right, it's legitimate. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, you know, let's say we, we did make a big push. Uh, you know, number one, it's doubtful that we would nestle up to the same position underneath it. And even if we did, it wouldn't change the narrative or the story in any substantial way at all. It would be, it, it would be a tedious footnote to the story. And on top of that, like, you might be able to say, yeah, but there's more money in the Amazon store. But now, ah, now, my friends of Chat Realm, now you get to see... Why, uh, why I like iTunes Bookstore so much better as an author because, uh, like, if the goal is to make more money, I wouldn't even bother putting it on fucking Amazon for... I mean, they take, they take 70%. You get 30, 30%. Yeah, 30. yeah. It's, I mean, there's money in it. There's, there's, there's definite money in it, you know, but, and, and especially if we're looking at it as ancillary revenue, there's, there's a lot of money in it. But... Um, at the same time, what will get us a lot of money on Amazon and will push us up the charts is if all of a sudden, you know, if Everyone's this, stays, if this stays up there, I mean, like, you know, what if we get written up, let's say theoretically, that we got word to Newsday, which, by the way, was the, was the paper for which Mike McGrady 
uh, marshaled the people who wrote Naked Came the Stranger, and we said, hey, uh-huh. like, by the way, Mike McGrady died this year in his honor, which is true, you know. Yes. Uh, oh, true no, enough. We, we true enough to talk well. about uh, yeah, we, no, well, I mean, we knew very well of his work, and we knew very well of his experiment, and we had great respect enough to, to model what we're doing. On absolutely, and, and a lot of it, is this, it is, this is the Naked Game, the Stranger playbook. The, right. All the I various writers, the all the different jobs, all the, the, the complete lack of, of plot cohesion and, and the isolation of only sex as the only thing that we were selling. That's all Naked Game, the Stranger. If, let's say... We were to do that, and now all of a sudden, in a major metropolitan newspaper, we're written up as, you know, uh, McGrady remembered, um, you know, by internet yeah. pranksters with a modern era right. naked came the stranger. Like, now all of a sudden, and we list, and we say on there, in that article, buy it on Amazon, buy it on iBooks, now all of a sudden that's, that's a big thing. And again, what, we, what we've, me and Brian have talked about, the longer this is up there, it doesn't get less news value It gets more yeah. news value yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's the difference between what we're doing now and all of our other shenanigans. Every time we do something else, it gets stale and the joke wears thin. And you might have like a version 2.0 that gets a little bit of interest, but not this, man. The longer it stays there and the louder people argue about whether this is good or bad or, or whatever, which, by the way, uh, I think my favorite review at this second might be the one that said, Fifty Shades of Grey was a children's book compa- compared to this. And, and essentially, the reviewer thought it was too filthy, like was upset that every other word was... That it it's the, filthy. Uh, I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> I think it probably is shameful that I, that I will say that I've only started reading the book after it became a success. I share, I share a, a very a great uh, kinship with everybody who's bought the book since we started talking about it, because I hadn't read it. Until I still have not. I still maybe I'll read it on the flight back. Uh, but you were saying it made you guffaw out loud on an airplane. Oh yeah, no, I was flying back from Columbus. Oh, well, actually, it was DC to SFO, and I embarrassed myself. I embarrassed myself <laughs> with the following. I can read the following things that made me laugh so fucking hard that I embarrassed myself because I made notes on the iBook app on my on my. Uh, uh, on my iPhone. I mean, here we go. Okay. Let's go to the notes. Um, here was the first one. And I'll, I'll, I'll read you what notes I wrote to myself. Because in, in the iBooks app, you can highlight it. And then it brings you to a thing where you can note why you, uh, why you highlighted it. And I just wrote amazing. <laughs> to this. I looked down at my sweaty naked body to see a cat orange and white, rubbing its back in between my legs. It was dripping with some kind of fluid. It looked at me and purred. I thought for a moment, was this cat licking my pussy as I slept? (laughs) Diamond Club book, Diamond Club a novel by Patricia Harkins Bradley, available on the iBook store for only 99 cents. Let's move on right along, why don't we? Uh, this one, I thought this is clean. This is a clean line. Uh, never before had I had sex in a public restroom, much less in the second busiest airport in the state of California, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> so, hey, real quick, um, on the... Uh... What was that one where you said it was clearly written for two guys having sex, but they just, like, swapped out two words? Uh, that is the... A... I forget what the chapter is, but she fucks a person in, uh, in an airport bathroom, and there are definitely lines that have <laughs> the airport, the, the, the flight attendant, kissing the shaft of her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> like now, was that was that a case where somebody just had that laying around, like from a previous effort, and just sort of tried to? I don't know. Actually, it actually left. did make me worried that I was. I, I became afraid that people had just plagiarized other erotic fiction, and we were selling it. Yeah, that's that is the only way that we could get totally totally fucked on this. Uh, that, but that would be the end of it. But um, I think it might have initially been because I remember there was one chapter where me and you fucked each other. 
<laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe that was it. Because I, well, I remember somebody on Twitter saying, should have left it, Brian and Justin. Yeah. So maybe that it. And I think that might have been it. But uh, let, me, let me move. Right. Actually, this is from that chapter. Um, he stood up and kissed me on the asshole with his soft lips. <laughs> now, this is the one that you lost it for. I absolutely <laughs> lost it on this one. Just for the visual of somebody standing up and just like casually. Because it's very hard <laughs> physically to casually kiss somebody on the asshole. Like, you can kiss somebody on the ass very casually. You can kiss somebody on the ass cheek very casually. But just like a, like a peck. It's hard. Like, it requires hands. Like, you have to spread an ass to kiss somebody on the asshole very casually. It, just, sure. it was a very funny image to me. Somebody standing up and just on the way north decides to, like, just a real kiss, like a butterfly kiss right on the asshole. Not a, people are saying T.I.B. Not a T.I.B. Not a tongue in the asshole, just a sweet right on the asshole. That was very, it's a very funny idea to me. Uh, and I, I wrote, uh, my note to that one was crying. <laughs> Here's a note, a note that uh, I, I wrote just awesome. Just awesome. Uh, he set the menu on the table with such precision and gentleness. I couldn't help but look at his large hands. They held signs of work, but were lithe like the wings of a moth. <laughs> <laughs> the moth. I mean, here's the thing. Do you think that was an intentional, uh, hilarious, uh, hilariously? The, yeah, but it might be a moth. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, it's the funniest thing that I could have possibly thought of. Actually, oh, no. My gosh. This is. The note I wrote on this was the best concept ever imagined. And I mean this seriously. This is John Waters brilliant. This is a really, like, when, when anybody oh, no, bitches... This, this, is my, this is my favorite thing in the entire book. This is, this is what I will tell my grandchildren about when I, when I explain to them about the romance book we wrote. Anybody who says that we are ripping people off for 99 cents, I will counter with, you can be disappointed in this idea. You can not agree with this idea. But that is the risk with art, right? You, you can sure. you, you take a chance on art if, you are not, if it is not to your sensibilities, and then it's not to your sensibilities. But the only thing that you can criticize people for, in my opinion, is being lazy with art. And this book, for <laughs> this one thing alone, this one concept alone, can never be described as lazy. This is a daring, interesting, creative, and brilliant concept. So with a straight face deliver in, yes. in what ostensibly, like, again, we now know of at least 114 confirmed people who were not in on the joke, who are 124 as of right now, one-star reviews, because I'm assuming nobody who's in on the joke uh, and likes it went and did a one-star review. jokingly giving, but yeah. 124 women read what they thought was a, was a traditional romance novel and encountered the following passage. Uh, very quick setup. Our uh, heroine, Brianna Young, is uh, sleeping with a, or is in the process of sexing up a uh, Iraqi war veteran who, has one of his, who had one of his legs amputated due to a war injury. She finds out that he has a very large penis. Um, he then says the following. This is a direct quote. You know how they say that a blind man's other senses, hearing and smell, etc., gets stronger since his vision is gone? Well, that's what the doctors say is happening to me. My left leg is mostly gone, but my, uh, you know, is growing to compensate. In a few months, I'll get a special shoe fitted for it. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to read that on Twitter tomorrow. I want, I want that to be the defining quote from the book. Anybody who tells me that that is not brilliant, that is John Waters brilliant. You would see that in a John Waters movie. A guy whose leg is amputated and finds 
that like a blind, like daredevil. This is a daredevil of dicks. His uh, dick is know, growing actually, to the point where he's going to fit a shoe around the head of his dick and walk on his fucking dick and a right leg. His, his gait will be very odd because most of the time it'll be like step and gelatinous flobble, step gelatinous flobble. I know. And every swap, he'll just. But, but when he gets excited, he'll just have to hop one leg in anyway. It's like, and it's just going to be hard, harder to carry a cactus around. It's the most brilliant thing I, I most creative and brilliant thing that I've I've read in a very long time, and I'm so thrilled that our our names are anywhere a part of it and and that we had any part in in making it a reality uh it's hey speaking of which there's we need it we need i mean normally this is the kind of thing we would do on nsfw but but it's only recent news that you're going to be on twit tomorrow i i wonder if we should call out some more choice quotes you know nothing nothing too dirty to be said on twit but i guarantee you this topic of conversation you know, Leo's going to want to read something, so if that's the case, we ought to, we ought to have our, our slam dunks all lined up. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Also, I do want to point out that uh, I got a big rash of shit from uh, Kiala of the Vaginal Fantasy Podcast on Twitter for forgetting her name. <laughs> on... Oh, yeah, so good. I got a, uh, and the other one whose name I can't remember, like, you'll rue the day, young. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow, how amazing was that moment? How surreal was that moment of having Veronica Belmont uh, on the Vaginal Fantasy Podcast? Can, can, are you really not even allowed to say the name of the show on Twit? Is that a real deal? Um, thing? I mean, I don't know. It depends on what Leo, Leo wants. It depends wants. on which Leo shows up. Well, I mean, listen, it says network. You can say, I think on Mac break, like, you just didn't want to say it. So, uh, you know, the live stream. I mean, we said it a lot on NSFW, so, uh, you know, yeah. uh, we, we haven't gotten reprimanded about it. Um, by the way, that, uh, the, the thing is, officially, we're never getting canceled off Twit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if that was ever a thing before, it's not a thing ever again. <laughs> no, you think just because, just because we're busting out in the real mainstream press and uh, merry internet pranksters bringing in more people? Yeah, I mean... When we have the possibility of ever doing this again, what's the cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's um, true. So yeah, listen, uh, man, it's been amazing. All right, you want to know what? We'll tease it. We'll tease it now. Um, <laughs> I just got a text message. Hold on, I'll read this. I don't know if I'm betraying privacy it's, here, it's, but... It's from Lana Jenko. It is not from Lana Jenko. <laughs> uh, this comes from... Uh, I don't know if I'll say his name, but a friend of mine. You made my day today. My owner's wife bought your book and I found out today she didn't know about NSFW show, but she reads all that dirty shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. She's a true... She's a real person? I'm asking right now. Did you tell her about it? <clears throat> oh my god that is amazing if that is the case well you know what I just realized I could do is I'm going to try opening up justin.tv and going to at least your chat channel see if I can go there um SQ Freak says I'm sorry your owner are you SMSing a slave <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I think he, uh, the owner of his company. Um, all right, we will tease this. All right, so I, I, I will, I will tease, I'll tease the tease. I'm going to talk about very soft numbers on Twit tomorrow. Extraordinarily soft, just like ballpark where we're at, what we've sold. Uh, once we have a week's worth of data, because we feel, Brian, we feel that, like that would be the most relevant to people, is us giving a, a week's yes. snapshot of what this looks like. We will talk about that on NSFW. Um, and, and we will, that's nitty gritty, every motherfucking red cent. We're, we're dropping trow and spreading cheeks 
on exactly how much <laughs> money. <laughs> because we want to we want to peck on the asshole. A soft <laughs> kiss on my asshole. <laughs> a soft. He stood up and softly kissed my asshole. That's it. He he softly <laughs> kissed and then left the asshole. Who does I'll that? What, I'll tell you what, man. If you want to blow your brains out with uh, jealous, jealous, fantastic uh, giddiness, wrap your mind around the fact that however much we're making, understand definitely in hard sales just on the iTunes store because we're blown away by how well it's doing. Yeah. But in hard numbers, there's a better there's a better selling book called Fifty Shades of Grey, and it's two brothers. So you so three times as many books. And more sales per book, plus selling for ten times the cost. That, I mean, it's like that, that blows my mind. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're gonna figure out. Uh, we're, we're we're going to we're gonna reveal everything on NSFW show. That's what that's what we've agreed to do. Those are the people that made it happen. Those are the people that deserve to hear it first. So, um, you know, that's that's the plan on Tuesday. Um, hey, we should. And Tom you're live Z. in studio again, right? Uh, yes, 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 and yes. We got to figure out what we're gonna do. It's gonna be awesome. Um, the Dragon Con thing is still happening, and and we're definitely mm-hmm. figuring out. Now we have obviously a little bit of a different perspective on what we can do for the people that wrote it. Uh, but we do want to take care of those people first and foremost, right, Bri? We want to we want to do something oh, absolutely. really nice for everybody who wrote uh, for the Diamond Club book and. I do want to do something nice for my friends who designed uh, designed the, the cover that we didn't use, because I'm not saying that it's related, but my friend who chiefly designed the cover that we didn't use, when I posted about it on Facebook, uh, he just leaves the comment, nice cover, asshole. <laughs> 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 and then... And then, and I don't know whether it's related, uh, a hilarious, semi-embarrassing picture from college <laughs> popped up on my Wikipedia. Yeah. And the person who put it up was was the guy who helped, uh, who, who developed along with uh, a couple of other friends, um, that other cover that we were that we were going to use before we we called the the audible. Uh, you know, to to use the other one, which is funny because I was talking about that with uh, with with a friend of mine, and uh, I was like, you know, the thing is, I still like that other cover better, but yeah. now, like, there really is, even if I still legitimately think that the book would be an exactly the same uh, hit, you know, otherwise, like, there's just now, I the argument's over because you can't remove any element of this and then say, well, it would have done bigger or better, you know. Um, right, right. You know, there's no, there's no way, because now it's all hypotheticals and you're arguing on the wrong side of the hypothetical. So it's like, right. like as much as I like the other cover more, um, you know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Although I do want, I want a, a, I want a special edition of the book with that cover. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what that is. I mean, in terms of, we're getting a lot of really good questions here. Um, <clears throat> You know, uh, are we going to do an audio version? Um, are we going to do a print run of the book? You know, I don't know. I, I really, I really, really, really don't know. There's also the fact that, like, there's a lot of shit that I think, Brian, I think we would think is just completely ridiculous uh, when we launched it fucking five days ago that now doesn't seem insane. Like, let's say a publisher came to us and said, we want to sell this book. Like, that's oh something God. that's wow. like, that's, you know, silly, but at the same time, now that it has been a thing and it continues to be a thing and shows little sign of not being a thing. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that aspect, right? So it's like we were excited to fool Lonely Housewives. What happens when we start fooling industry representatives who know one thing? Here's a new hot author with a number four best-selling book cozying up right next to Fifty Shades of Grey. That would be amazing. Um, okay. So I asked him, did you tell her about it? 
And this is what he sends me back. No. The girls in the office fucking masturbate to Fifty Shades and talk about it. If it reached a random person in Rhode Island, you guys must be doing well with it. She can't figure out why it's up so high. She didn't even finish it. <laughs> oh, so much wind. So much wind times a million. That's just, this is in every way. This moment, this moment that happened right now was all I wanted when we launched the idea one month and two weeks ago. This, oh, yes, happiness. Well, because the idea is find out what everybody's talking about. At this point, it's, it's you know, I mean, let's, let's not forget that if we are to measure ourselves against Naked Came the Stranger, Naked Came the Stranger was a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. You know? So, it's like all the people care about, uh, when you're done with selling books, all you care about okay. is So here's publicity. the difference, The difference is, is that Naked Came the Stranger was good enough that people who were looking for sex read it and and told their friends to buy it, and that's how it ended up on the New York bestseller. No, I, I mean, like, it, it, uh, I mean, and I haven't read much like our own book. Uh, Naked Game, The Stranger, and The Diamond <laughs> Club are also alike in that I've read neither of them. Um, right. But from the point of Naked Game, The Stranger was that it was intentionally edited to be shit, you know, like it was edited to be exactly what we did, to be completely incoherent, inco uh, to not have any character development and just only deliver on what I am so pleased has become a iconic part of this, uh, of this, this whole experiment. Bang it. Yeah, um, by the way, what a day, like considering we woke up that morning, man, I cannot believe it's just been five days because my morning and it was like an afterthought. It was like this flash of like, oh, fuck, there's no way we can launch this and explain our idea just in text. It's like we need a tightly edited video. And so we recorded that. It took us like five minutes. And originally we're like, we could do this on iMovie. Well, it turns out iMovie is way lousy with, with precise cuts on lots of little moments like that. And so we ended up having to use an edit bay at Revision 3. And thankfully they were cool with us throwing that together. Uh, Zach Miner even helped us uh, comp uh, compile it in the right format so that we could push it to YouTube. And uh, luckily, they thought it was hilarious over there. So huge thanks. I mean, Revision 3, if you ask me, as important to the actual book and what's inside, as important as the cover, as important was of the push uh, was the video auditioning ourselves to and our idea yeah. to the next. No, that was absolutely crucial, and and this would not have had the success that it had if it weren't for that book. Now let me let me uh, let me read for you something, Brian. Uh, this Go is ahead. from DigitalJournal.com. dot com. Right. Headline: Authors troll Fifty Shades trilogy with new book. Uh, written by Brian La Sorsa, uh yesterday. Okay. Twenty one hours ago. <clears throat> There's nothing like trolling soccer moms. Two men have realized this all too well, and they plan to make a few bucks along the way. Brian Brushwood and Justin Young, co-hosts of the weekly web show NSFW, noticed a trend in the publishing industry. Erotic fiction is selling like hotcakes. British author E.L. James' Fifty Shades trilogy consists of the top three best-selling books almost anywhere you look. And in June, the first installment even surpassed J.K. Rowling's Harry, po Harry Potter as the fastest-selling paperback of all time. So, we're looking at the top 10 ebooks on the iBook store, said the duo, and we noticed something a bunch of books that just look like Fifty Shades of Grey. End quote. That's when they decided why not write a book that looks like Fifty Shades of Grey, sell out of the iTunes store, and see what happens. Better yet, why not find random people on the web to draft it up? Quote, Our book was, uh, was written completely by the internet, explains Bushwood. Hey, you're Bushwood. God damn it. Hey, hey by quote, the way, for the record, uh, to everybody watching, Anytime you see Bushwood instead of Brushwood, you hop in the comments. Just, 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 not, not rudely. Just, just, let's get it fixed. Let's get that right. <laughs> Nobody's reading the entire, nobody reads the entire thing, but it, it does have three things. A cover that looks like Fifty Shades of Grey, lots and lots of sex, and characters who have jobs that we think are extremely trendy. Now I'm going to skip 
below. I'll get to the success part. Re- released on July 29th, the book already managed to climb to the number four spot of the iTunes top charts list, falling short only to E.L. James's trilogy. And it's no small wonder, the market for independent ebooks is booming right now. As Jeffrey Bezos, CEO of Amazon, recently wrote, <laughs> recently wrote in a letter to shareholders, Kindle Direct Publishing has taken on an astonishing scale, and I won't read the whole thing because we've already gotten to the point that I want to illustrate, which is that me and Brian were quoted, with, it, without irony, in the same blog post as Jeff Bezos about the history and trend of ebooks. We've so become awesome. illustrative of a publishing trend with this retarded book, and I mean that in the best possible way. It's so amazing. Uh, yes. Okay, people are also talking about the Telegraph. Oh, oh, uh, damn it. There was something I wanted to bring up about, about the Fifty Shades of Grey lady. Um, yeah, it's gone. But, uh, but the Telegraph thing, of course, is what kicked it all off. Is, is once, once, I mean, there was a few little blog posts here and there, but the Telegraph is big enough that everybody is ripping it off now, I, or I guess, or as they call it, sourcing the news. Yeah, news. and basically the big, the big thing there is that apparently now the meme, the meme uh, is that this is made up of our listeners, chat realms, real-life sexual experiences. Oh, that is what I wanted to say, and you know what? I am completely okay with that. I feel no need to, if, if organically the press begins to misreport that to me that's only a better story because it's a sexy hook the sexy hug <laughs> and, and if i think that's true and i get to the to the three-legged uh, iraqi war vet then uh, all of a sudden <laughs> i'm even more impressed with the book rabbit badger says well i do tenderly kiss buttholes once in a while <laughs> <laughs> if they douched he adds qualifyingly Uh, so okay here's where my biggest concern is right now and it's such a big concern that I almost want to figure out a way for you to push it on Twit because right now we have homeostasis as long as Fifty Shades is rocking and as long as uh, everything stays the same as long as we continue to have a four and a half star rating and be in that number four spot I think we'll continue to stay there. However, bit by bit, the one-star reviews come in. And, and let me tell you, if we have, if it gets to a point where there's 400 one-star reviews against our 1,500 five-star re- or 1,200 five-star reviews, now we're down to three stars and we, we lose our spot, right? So, and separately, I will say that the war of the reviews, the one-star, five-star battle-off, uh, is my favorite thing in the entire world. Back and forth. It is the funniest shit. Uh, so I don't know, like, should you, should you craftily suggest on Twit that uh, if you want to join this game that seems See, to be I playing? Think, Brian, that's the beautiful thing about where we're at right now, is we don't have to ask. Like, it's a thing. Yeah. The war is on. It's happening. Like, if you want to do it, it's a very simple entry. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's true. You know, it, it's it's like... Uh, well, I'll tell you, hey, do you, think, do you think it's worth it when I get back for us to record another one of these videos? Because uh, I'll, I'll, I'm yeah. going to, by the way, I didn't, I didn't tell you, I'm going to crash with you Monday night. Uh, maybe we could record another one of these videos, chop it together, just saying, because uh, essentially the one negative thing we got from Reddit was people didn't want to give us any money. And look, it wasn't about us making money from you guys. And it's not even about us making money at all. We just needed the push to get in the top ten. Guess what? We're in the top ten, and the battle's on. And then the rest of it could be us reading the reviews back and forth and uh, just saying, join the battle. We push that thing on Reddit, and I think they would dig that because it would be totally... Yeah, you know, well, I think... Totally and also, once we kind of make some decisions about the money, I mean, I think... And this is something that we'll go into a lot more. Uh, you know, I'll talk you know, uh, a little bit on, on Twitter. We're going to talk a lot on NSFW about the question of where the money's going and like, I think if you, and it, it's funny watching back to us talking on NSFW show about it. Um, yeah. Cause like the idea of us talking about like, well, where's the money going to go? Like even asking us on an NSFW show, like the, the, the way we're talking about it and the way we meant it was that like, it's like, well, what do you mean? Like, where's $500 going to go? Like, you know, we'll just give it back to the fans. Yes. Like, you know, like, what, yes. what a stupid fucking question. Like, it's $500. Who gives a shit? 
Like, you know, we're, yeah. we're going to do something nice for the people who wrote it, and then we'll spend the rest on booze for Dragon Con. Like, it's not a fuck lot of money. That obviously has changed <laughs> since, <laughs> since then. It is now more money. Um, so uh, we have bigger questions to ask. We have bigger decisions to make, and we'll make those in, in, in due time. But, uh, you know, we'll go from that. The one thing that we want to be careful about is there's a danger to expectations and there's a danger to, uh, you know. Well, yeah, like po- point out like what happened with the, uh, with the, the oatmeal guy. Yeah, the oatmeal guy, you know, he raised a shit ton of money and that's different because people donated for a specific thing, but like legally he had restrictions. It's like once he made more than what he wanted to make to give to breast cancer awareness and treatment and, uh, you know, wildlife preservation, uh, he wanted to give to other worthy causes, and legally he had some entanglements there. We don't, we're not in quite the same situation since we're not soliciting it as a as a charity. Um, we well, are selling the a product. Too, is, is we we don't want to we don't want to step in that trap. Yeah, we also as you freak point something out, which is true like that, that we have to pay taxes on this, which is another thing. Yes, that's true. Well, and the other thing is the moment we even, even hint or suggest that we're going to do something magnanimous or, or, uh, or charity-driven, it changes us in the court of public opinion to where all of a sudden it's, it's the public's business what we do. And, and whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's not a fun thing. And th- we're only in this for fun. Yeah. And the only way to keep it fun is for our, our public attitude to be, hey, fuck you, it's our idea, our money. Even though it's not our money, it's totally your money. And we've always felt like that since day one. Well, and it's like, it's one of those things where you're like, hey, listen, um, if, if we do something cool, it's going to be something very NSFW. It's going to be something very much uh, in, in the lines where everybody can feel awesome about it in the same way that they can feel awesome about the book. But it's going to be on our, our you know, it's going to be done our way. You know, like, I, I think me and Brian are both resolute in that uh, we have no interest in getting pushed around into doing something uh, that we don't feel comfortable with. And we feel like there's a trust that you guys have given us, the, not only the hardcore Diamond Club people, but, uh, you know, also other people who, you know, cotton to the spirit of this, um, that, uh, that, that want to see something, and, something cool done. And by with. the way, just, just, uh, here's a tease to the tease to the tease, uh, is when, when we talk about the money, we're talking like four digits. <laughs> Yeah. So I mean, let's 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 keep let's let's keep our heads together on this. You know, this is not yeah. this is not the king's ransom we're talking about. No, no, no. It's certainly not. Uh, certainly not anything like that. Until we sell the publishing rights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I and mean, we Code Monkey's like you know, and this is my favorite part about watching this. Code Monkey X. Are people really getting bent out of shape about the money? It was clear from the start there was no money for the writers or anyone, which is true. We very explicitly, in fact, I believe my quote was, this is the Huffington Post model, wherein you do yes. all the work and we reap all the benefits. Cue evil laugh. <laughs> like well, that, yeah, yeah, keep all the money. That, that, was, uh, that, was, that was very clear from the very beginning. And people were saying that the Redditors were mad about the money. The Redditors didn't write the book. Diamond Club wrote the book. Diamond Club, I've heard nothing from Diamond Club about the money. Nor do I have any yes. uh, expectation that I will. See, and, and, and to be honest, that makes, me, that makes me wonder if we should even spend a lot of time talking about the money on NSFW. I mean, I mean uh, if, if we want to expose our buttholes for, for Reddit to tenderly kiss... Well, then, yeah, I, the but, thing is, fuck Reddit. I mean, like, the, like I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not, you know, I'm not fuck Reddit like fuck Reddit. But, like, you know, like, I, I think I want to reveal the numbers because we're in a very interesting position, I think, for anybody who's interested in e-publishing to, you know pull back, open the kimono on what this means. You know, what is money? What is a 99 cent hit look like in dollars and cents? You know, uh, I think a lot of people will find that very interesting. And I think that we're in a very unique position to reveal that because this isn't our living. You know, this isn't, uh, you know, something that we are worried is going to taint our reputation, um, you know, in, in the industry of publishing. Like we could give a fuck. We have the ability to reveal all this information. I think it, it'd be awesome if we did reveal all this information. Um, in terms of what to do with the rest of the money, like, you know, I think 
that's just something where if we have a, uh, you know, it's like anything else within within SFW. We have tools. What are we going to do with those tools? Yes. You know, we have an opportunity. What are we going to do what with that needs, opportunity? What needs to be set on fire? That's <laughs> that's sort of. The, and I think the uh, motto if, for the if show. we have if we have the ability to do something cool, uh, you know, that, like we like we like has always been the, the case. We want to do something cool with it. So, you know, we'll see. And also, the other thing is like. There's an evolving element to this, um, you know, and and that's this idea has evolved from the first call that I got in the Denver airport uh, uh, with Brian talking about the idea of of John Blue Cheese, John Tilton, uh, mentioning you know like oh well we should do uh, you know something with an erotic fiction book. And we should write an erotic fiction book. And and then the evolution of the, the, the naked came the stranger thing and like everything kind of coming together the way that it did. Um, you know, I, I think it's just been, uh, it's, it, it's always been up uh, above board. It's, it's, and it's constantly evolved from something that like, you know, Hey, fucking, I think five days ago, we thought this thing would spend a cup of coffee in the top 10 and then drop like a stone. Yes. You know? Well, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Now I got a taste for it. Now it's like I want to sit there for weeks and months, as long as Fifty Shades is racking up, like a little remora catching a free ride on a shark. I want to sit here with our, with our horse shit joke and just laugh the entire way. Which leads me to what we teased. <laughs> Let me see if I can find... Where's deleted messages? Here we go. Deleted messages. <laughs> SPKSYN says, is there a hidden code for a contest for a DeLorean? <laughs> Actually, there's a hidden code, but it's for a foot rub from Justin. Exactly. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now play for you the message oh, that I got from Brian <laughs> last night. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Ah, oh, fuck beans. God damn it. Oh, man, can't, can't you send it as an MP3 or something and play it? Aren't you able to forward messages? Can we? I thought so. On iOS? I might have made that up. Mm, no. Uh, well, anyway, here, let me just... And by the way, hold on real quick. Pause, pause it before you do this. Yes. Uh, this is my second day of nonstop. Like, I've, I've had only two hours of sleep in the last 48. In the last time, we had done rehearsals. We had done the TV show. I got up early the next morning. They chased me out of my room because there was a problem with the fire alarm. Uh, then we had to go and have uh, production meetings to talk about uh, possible future projects because they seemed really happy with everything. Um, and then on top of that, I still owed uh, two episodes worth of tricks to be recorded for Scam School because we wanted to do Scam Schools out here. And then I just finished all of that. And then I was talking to Bonnie uh, and, uh, and stumbled across this idea, which I thought was hilarious. And, <laughs> and Bonnie thought was hilarious. And so I'm already whipped into a frenzy. Like I now am firmly committed to this is the greatest idea I've ever had. And it's clearly the next evolution the next, the next phase of this experiment. Okay, here we go. All right, Justin, do not let me forget about this idea because at some point somebody's going to ask us what is our next plan, and our next plan is going to be that the legitimize the Diamond Club <clears throat> is to have a crappy parody come out of the Diamond Club that pisses off all the real fans of the Diamond Club. So that's why we are now hard at work writing the Diarrhea Club, <laughs> which we have planned to release in two weeks. And when it does, all of our fans will buy it to put it in the top ten, and then they will uh, give it one-star reviews, shouting about how it's nothing like the diamond, and it doesn't even deserve waste of a dollar. <laughs> and basically... <laughs> Basically, we made fun of the Fifty Shades of Grey people again. 
By the way, those are those are Ramadan prayers in the background that you're hearing <laughs> when I say that. I left I left the room so that I can go out because I have to I have to make all my calls from the lobby where there's Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, so there we go. That was the call I woke up to this morning, which tickled me to no end for three reasons. Number one, how confident the idea was delivered. <laughs> Number two, the complete the idea of before we even get to the title, before we get to the title, the idea of what we need to do, since we've done something where everybody gives it five stars, we need something where people give it one star, <laughs> where it's like, the idea is we need to write something that is repellent to everybody <laughs> beyond the thing that we've wrote, written that is repellent to everybody. We need something that is more repellent to even the people that <laughs> like this thing. <laughs> and what I love, I love the fact that it would be everybody goes out and buys it and then shits on it. And then, and so, so then the top ten becomes, becomes Fifty Shades of Grey, The Diamond Club, five stars, The Diarrhea Club with a terrible parody cover and a one star. And I'm just, I can tell you, I love it. It would be awesome. It's ridiculous and we're not doing it. <laughs> The book cover, I love this idea from the chat room. The book cover can be a sepia toned picture of a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it's a kids on it next to a butthole. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was that was what I woke up to. It uh, it is my by far the silliest I've ever heard, Brian, and it was it was amazing. It is amazing. Think of what Greg suggests. But the cover could just be a dog shitting. <laughs> Didn't the Beastie Boys do that? Yeah, uh, I don't know. That's a, I know that they had that album, Some Old Bullshit, yeah. and it had like a golden retriever on it. Um, <laughs> Badger says, maybe we'll just do it without you. Go for it. That's yes. You have our permission. Launch the Diarrhea Club. The Diarrhea Club. And then, of course, there is the idea that somebody is enthusiastically and confidently stating as if it will be a surefire hit. Like, this is, listen, buddy, this is, this is fucking Don Draper walking into the boardroom and pitching fucking Kodak uh, or pitching Polaroid with the wheel. This is Brian's pitch with the confidence of Don Draper. The Diarrhea Club. Something that no matter what you say before or after, the fucking point is the Diarrhea Club. <laughs> like there's a club for diarrhea. <laughs> Remaining a uh, continent together is the support group for the Diarrhea Club. Um, M MKO Pelkey says, sounds like a shit book. Um, oh my god <laughs> uh, a a a Rian says I was, o I was already kind of turned off at trolling erotic fiction I'm just going to sit uh, I'm, I'm going to sit in the back and draw yeah well and, then, uh, and that's Yoshi and that's Yoshi I mean listen yeah the, 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 the trolling uh, element is kind of like the cool. easiest way that people can wrap their head around it but again with success comes the ability to insufferably describe what you've done as art. And that's what we're going to yes. do a lot. Yes. Uh, yes. What really this all, is... It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't erotic fiction that we were trolling. We were trolling specifically the runaway success and the reputation that Fifty Shades of Grey has for being not a very good book, but chock full of banging. And so we wanted to try taking that to the logical extreme. Yeah, which is to completely remove character development and completely remove plot. And and yeah. just make as many interesting sexual encounters for our heroine as possible, and that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. So there we go. I mean, like to be honest, and everybody and everybody obviously is having a very very good time reading the one star reviews. Um, to be honest, there's an element of me that I don't feel bad about selling it to them, nor do I feel bad about selling it to them in the way that we've sold it to them. But for people who genuinely don't like it, I, I don't really I, think... You're it, right. I, 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 I don't, I don't think a ton of like glee it. in it. Like, I, I don't think it's particularly super 
funny necessarily, only because like, you know, it's like, all right, man, well, you didn't dig it. Like, that's, 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 you know, that's too bad. But at the same time, like, I don't feel bad about it. Like, I don't, I don't feel bad that, because I think there's, there's, again, there's a dollar's worth of creativity. And, and maybe this is, it is misleading. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind. Yes, I, and our goal, our goal is not to cackle and be like, ha ha, you like this kind of book. But, and that's why it's funny that you bought ours, because fuck you. But it's like, no, it's like, you know, hey, man, it's rad that you like banging. You like bang? We, we, we came up with some of the bang-worthiest banging this side of bang town. Exactly. All right, so uh, so, J, JJ702561 writes, hey, has anyone gotten E.L. James's point of view on the book? That's whose opinion I really want. Um, if we ever get to the point where E.L. James comments about the Diamond Club, I will pee in a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which means you already have. I didn't pee in a trash can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got video footage of it. No, was I really peeing in a trash can or was that just the joke? You know what's funny? is I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. You I don't think we found it. Um, that was a great night, uh, is all I remember. That was a great night. <laughs> uh, yeah, so listen. Um, man, it's been crazy. It's been, it's been absolutely insane. I would love, I mean, to be, to be honest, in all, in all honesty, uh, you know, I think, if there's anything that, in hindsight, I think, and I think it was necessary to get the word out to people, but uh, it's not the whole story uh, of, like, the, like, fuck Fifty Shades of Grey. Because I don't really think fuck Fifty Shades of Grey. Like, it, it, it's an experiment and it's an idea. Um, but, like, I have nothing but respect for, for E.L. James. I have nothing but respect for that series. I mean, if you look at just anything that can touch on culture the way that she did, and then get, like, the you know, like, the movie deal she got out of that? Like yeah. she got like final cut privileges on the movie, like that's how wow. big the bidding the bidding war was. Like that shit never happens for authors. Like Stephen King doesn't get that kind of shit. Like there's a reason why Stephen King yeah. is not thrilled with the Stanley Kubrick version of The Shining, because like right, you, you, I mean like you can have script approval. That's fairly often for hit uh, fairly. You know, but that's rare. It's rare for, for books to get option like that. Only mega hit books or mega established uh, authors get script approval. You know, final cut approval? That's crazy pants McGillicuddy. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I have respect for E.L. James. I think she's great. I think she's fantastic. I think that they're the success she's had, the legitimacy she's brought to the e-book and e-publishing uh, uh, world has been remarkable. Um, obviously this is, our project is an echo of that, and, and she is the mama bear to something like this. We are having a lot of fun with it. Um, but at the same time, man, uh, fuck, all cheers to her. I would love to hear what she thinks about the book, and, and I hope that if she hates it, that, uh, she knows that we like her. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the king's speech right there. There we go. There we go. Um, uh, all right, man. Well, look, I think I'm going to, uh, looks like I start some breakfast here. Uh, I am heading back home today. So, um, I will have very brief moments of connectivity. And during those times, if anyone wants to chat over Twitter, I will be available and very, very interested in talking to any other living being. There we go. Get back into it. So yeah. keep an eye, keep an eye on, uh, at, uh, at reply, she would on Twitter and, and he'll, fucking Twitter chat your ear off because he's what, what do you have nothing but fucking 24 hours in a plane yeah pretty much and it's weird because like uh, you know I'm, I'm in the future right today is the 5th right now uh, yeah. it is August 5th and uh, when I uh, what uh, in 6 hours no I'm sorry in 8 hours I get on a plane and then I'm going to spend 20 hours on that plane and then when I land it will be 8 o'clock in the evening on August 5th yeah that's nuts. That's fucking yeah. nuts. So are you staying in our apartment on Sunday night? No. Um, the uh, uh, It was like crazy pants uh, to get a rental car for a week and a day. So I only got one that I'm going to pick Oh, uh, that I'm gonna pick up Monday morning. 
So instead, what I'm going to do is just take a shuttle to a hotel Sunday night, and then I got to drop off Meeks at the airport, and then um, uh, pick up a rental car, and then I'll come over uh, Monday. Are you around during the day on Monday? Yeah, I believe so. We'll figure it out. This okay. is stuff All that right. we don't need to talk about on, on you know, on how the else will everyone else know to come join us? Exactly. Uh, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, of course, the legendary uh, Brian Brushwood. There you go. All right, Brian. Bye, guys. Talk to you. See you. All right. I did want to do one last thing before we wrap up this very special edition of uh, Jury Saturday. I was not planning. I had a whole thing planned on why. Here, I'll, I'll run through what I planned on talking about. Uh, number one, I won the movie draft. Uh, of course, there's a couple weeks left, but I won it. Uh, Total Recall took a shit, and that means that Tom isn't going to catch me, and that means that uh, Sarah, because Dark Knight's got, not going to do Avengers money, uh, I won. Okay. Uh, in terms of politics, um, I believe that the Chick-fil-A uh, gay rights issue that is happening right now is a reaction to people who would otherwise be very, very energized, Obama voters who are not outwardly but inwardly disappointed with the presidency of President Obama and uh, wish that he would take more of a proactive stance on this stuff. And I believe that that will lead, by the time that we get to Election Day, Obama being more forthright about actual policy that he would lay out to uh, – to uh, gay rights, and uh, we might see another thing on gun control, uh, that he will step up rhetoric and, if not, offer specific uh, policy plans for both of those. And here's the last thing, and this is something that I wanted to open up with. Um, when, and I'm going to end this on, on a bit of a, a bit of a, a melon, not melancholy, I would like to think of an inspiring note, because I thought about it a lot, uh, you know, this has been a bit, a bit of a weird week uh, for me, not only because I was traveling and, and the Diamond Club thing happened, but also I had a bit of an issue, uh, and I didn't. There was there was a thing that happened in my family where uh, my um, my aunt. Let me let me back it up. I was raised, by and large, when I since from the age of eight, my brother was five. Um, by a man that wasn't my father. My my father, uh, my mom, my dad got divorced. My dad was largely out of the picture, although intermittently was was more kind of in. Um, and we were raised kind of day to day by my mom's boyfriend Ron, who is my dad. For all intents and purposes, he is he is absolutely a a, a father to me. Uh, he is my father. His uncle uh, and and his aunt. Uh, are Jimmy and Sharon, and we all just call them Uncle Jimmy and Aunt Sharon, me and my brother. Now, when when we were growing up, I mean, we were his nephew's girlfriend's kids, you know. There wasn't a lot that, you know, he had to, had to go on, but he, he, you know, to say that that they were kind to us would be an absolute understatement, you know. He, uh, both of them, I mean, they were just very unique humans. I mean, my uncle Jim was a fucking curiosity of a human being. He was massive, you know, he, he had a, he had a neck like a football player and I'm not even fucking around. This dude drank like a case of Milwaukee's best a day. I'm not, and that's not hyperbole. Like he would literally like fucking from wake up to go to sleep, he was a huge dude, a muscular dude, and he would just drink a fucking case. Like we're talking in like the double digits in the twenties of beers per day. He would just he would just drink steadily throughout the day, and he would never really get drunk. He would just get fucking giggly. Like he was such an amazing human being. And Sharon was was the same. She was just they were so kind. They and and that family, Ron's family, is uh, they're 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 great, but they're they can get crazy at times, you know. They're they're kind of crazy people, but um, I love them all, and and specifically Jimmy and Sharon. But a year ago, Sharon was diagnosed with um, cancer, and she, uh, you know, that one thing about that family is that they're really weird about medicine, and and they don't 
you know, they procrastinate and they think they can heal things on their own. And, and, you know, that kind of came, came to bite them. Uh, Sharon died this week and, and Jimmy died shortly after. Um, but it really made me think, especially with the Diamond Club thing, what it means to have feelings for people that would otherwise be strangers. What that means. And what that means about you. What that means about the ability and capacity to do it. Um, in the same way that they looked at their nephew's kids and said, you know what, I, we want to really put... Uh, put time and care and love in, into these kids. Um, you know, and, and in a small way, you know, I think that's what binds us with the podcast. That what, that's, what, that's what binds us, that concept is what binds us with projects like, like the Diamond Club, uh, is to look at, you know, it might even be, um, you know, just you guys, just names in a chat room. It might be, faces in in a hangout it might be you know reviews on itunes but in in taking a bunch of people that you don't know and uh and showing them that that in some small way even if it's just on a common interest you you love them and you care about them that means a lot that's the thing i'm most proud of with the diamond club and that's the thing that i'm most proud of with nsfw uh, this, this is the thing I'm most proud of with Chat Realm, because um, I love all you guys and and the fact that you guys uh, you know share you know your own emotions and your own feelings and and we can all do these things together. Um, yeah, it means a lot. I don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't, you know, because because it does. It's it's that that I think makes us better human beings, and and the more that we pay attention to stuff like that the better off we're, we're going to be, even if it's in something as absolutely silly as, uh, as fucking, you know, the diamond club. Um, so just know that man, you guys are awesome. I love you guys. And, uh, I will see you all next week on, uh, on, on jury Saturday. I think it's definitely going to be Saturdays from here on out, by the way. Um, but tomorrow I'll be on Twit. Tuesday I'm on NSFW. Hopefully we'll have a weird things this week. Sorry for going off week uh, with, with weird things. But uh, until next time, folks, please don't die before the next episode of Jerry Saturday. <laughs>